In this tutorial, I will demonstrate the use of the N1201 SA Factor Impedance Analyzer. The antenna used by the gateway or end device plays an important role which should not be underestimated. That is why I'm making many videos about this subject. The VSWR and S11 are the two most important antenna parameters which you can measure with an antenna analyzer. These parameters determine how well an antenna performs. If you buy devices which includes antennas or you buy the antennas separately, I strongly recommend to measure the antenna parameters. I have noticed that you cannot trust the specified antenna parameters. Here you see three antennas. All three antennas should be tuned at 868 MHz. As you can see, this antenna is not tuned at 868 MHz. The fizz war is 5.7. Antenna B FISWAR is 2.4. Antenna C FISWAR is 1.2. Without an antenna analyzer, I would not have known that antenna A and B are not well tuned. If you build your own antenna, you need to measure the antenna parameters. I have built several antennas for this video series, and more often than not, the self built antennas had a visual greater than 2. If I did not have an antenna analyzer, I would not have known this. I bought the N1201 SA Factor Impedance Analyzer because it had good reviews. There could be better and cheaper antenna analyzers out there. Do your own research. The N1201 SA is presumably made by a Chinese manufacturer called Accuracy Agility Instrument. However, I could not find any information about this manufacturer. The N1201 SA Factor Impedance Analyzers measures the following antenna parameters. VSWR, S11, resistance, reactance and impedance. The 1201SA series has several models, the N1201SA, the N1201SAC, and the N1201SA+. The N1201SA is the basic model, which will be demonstrated in this tutorial. The working frequency of this model is between 137.5 MHz and 2700 MHz. The analyzer has a built-in high-capacity lithium-ion battery, which can be charged using the micro-USB port. The user connects an antenna to the SMA port. The analyzer sends a signal to the antenna. The analyzer measures how much power is reflected back at various frequencies. As explained in tutorial 33, an antenna with a visual smaller than 2 is considered to be a good antenna. This corresponds to an S11 smaller than minus 9.5 dB, which means less than 11.1% of the power is reflected back. The antenna and the N1201SA are sensitive to its environment. Avoid nearby walls and objects. This is the half-wave dipole antenna. As you can see, the visual is 1.3. And this antenna is tuned at 868 MHz. Here's a wall. Look at the fist war. As you can see, the fist war is now 1.4. Avoid nearby electrical equipment, for example, lamps, laptops, mobile phones, etc. 
Watch the face wall. A lamp. Two point two. The face wall is now one point zero. Place the analyzer on a non conductive table. This is wood. Do not touch the analyzer, antenna, or the cable during measurements. As you can see, if I touch the analyzer, the fist part slightly changes. If I touch the antenna, you can see the fist part changes. If I touch the cable, the face wall changes. Measure the antenna in its final enclosure and preferably measure the antenna parameters at the location where it is used. To avoid touching the analyzer or the antenna during measurements, I have built a simple test rig to hold the antenna when measuring the antenna parameters. The antenna is clamped at the type N plug to SMA. Connector with coaxial cable. The clamps are made of plastic. I use the same test rig when connecting an antenna to my end node. I have built the test rig with random parts found in my toolbox. Here is a screenshot with all the test rig parts. The clamps are made of plastic. The rod is part plastic and rubber. To use the test rig horizontally, first attach the L bracket, then attach the other parts. You can use one or both clamps. Here is the test rig in horizontal position. Other pictures of the test rig in horizontal position. And here are other pictures of the test rig in horizontal position. In this example, a Moxon antenna is clamped. And here it is connected to the N1201SA. And here the Moxon antenna is connected to the end node using the test rig. To use the test rig vertically, First attach the screw and washer, then attach the other parts. In this example, a collinear antenna is clamped and connected to the N1201SA. Here the collinear antenna is connected to the end node using the test rig. Here is the end node, the collinear antenna and the test rig. The N1201SA Factor Impedance Analyzer can be calibrated using an OSL calibration kit. The OSL calibration kit needs to be purchased separately. OSL stands for Open, Short and Load. This is the open item, it has no center pin. This is the short item, it has a center pin, as you can see over here. And this is the load. In this tutorial, I will not demonstrate how to calibrate the analyzer. This is the RF Factor Impedance Analyzer N1201SA. This is an SMA female. Adjustment knob. LCD screen. Metal housing made of aluminium. Four buttons. And this is the main menu button. This is the charging LED. 
If the LED is on, it means the device is charging. And if the LED is off, it means the device is charged. This is a micro USB type B female charging port. This is the serial data output port. This port only works for the N1201 SAC models. And here is the instrument reset when the analyzer gets stuck. This is top view. And this is the back view. This charging cable is included. This cable has a length of 120 centimeters. Not included is a charger. To charge this device, it needs a current greater than 1 ampere. I am using a 2.4 ampere iPhone charger. Do not use the computer USB port because it does not provide sufficient current to charge the antenna analyzer. Let's switch on the device. Press the control button and the OK button. The analyzer can be used in four operation modes with its corresponding screens. What you now see is the single point measuring mode. It is the default power on screen. Press the M button. This is the scan function mode. Press the control and the M button. This is the system information mode. Again, press the control and M button. This is the calibration mode. To switch off the device, press the OK button for 3 seconds. The device is now switched off. Switch on the device again. Control, OK. We are now in the single point measuring mode. Here you can see the impedance. If you press the OK button, you will see something else. If you press the OK button again, you will see the impedance again. As you can see, the frequency is 868 megahertz. You can change this frequency. Let's change this frequency to 950 megahertz. This digit is red, which means you can change this value. Turn the knob. Use these two arrow keys to switch position. As you can see, the frequency is now changed to 950 MHz. Let's change this back. The frequency is now changed back to 868 MHz. Let's switch to the scan function mode. Press the M button. On the top left corner, you can see which antenna parameter it is measuring. Now you see VSWR, now it is S11, this is the reactance, the resistance and the impedance. Let's switch back to the VSWR. This is the scaling factor. The scaling factor changes the scale of the Y axis. You can select the following scaling factors 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 
0 0.2, 0 0.5, 1, 2, 5, and the maximum is 10. Here we can set the marker frequency, that is this one. Let's change this to 769. Seven, six, nine. So the marker frequency is now changed to seven, six, nine. That's this marker. Let's set it back to eight, six, eight. This is the marker measurement, it is here. This is the battery charge level. This is the start frequency sweep. 237.5 megahertz is this line. And 1237.57 megahertz is this line. You can change these values. Let's go to the single point measuring mode. Press the M button. As you can see at 868 MHz, the phase bar is 1.2. Let's switch to the scan function mode. There is a discrepancy in values between the single point measurement screen and the scan function screen. If the sweep frequency range is large, the measurement value at the specified marker frequency deviates more from the actual value. If you want a more accurate value, reduce the sweep frequency range, this range, or use the single point mode. In single point mode, the measured value is always correct for the specified frequency. In the beginning of this video, I have shown you antenna A, B and C. The same antennas were also mentioned in tutorial 33, but they had different visuars. In tutorial 33, antenna A, B and C had these visuars, but in this tutorial, tutorial 40, the same antennas had different visuars. What might cause these differences? Well, I have opened these antennas multiple times and I have been poking around, which might have caused some slight changes. Antenna A, I don't care because it is a bad antenna. But I do care about antenna B. It has changed from 1.9 to 2.4. But I have some ideas how to fix slash improve antenna B. But that is a nice subject for a future video. By the way, antenna B is a sleeve dipole antenna. And when you open it, it looks like this. In tutorial 43, I will talk more about sleeve dipole antennas. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to answer them.